Hi guys, thank you for being here. I promised some alopecia areata for today and here it comes. I would like to focus on the alopecia areata consensus, which was published just recently. It was coordinated by Dimitri Wall and Rod Sinclair. It included many hair experts and I'm very happy to be one of them. What is interesting is that at the beginning we agreed only on 5% of the issues related to the treatment of alopecia areata. What does it mean? It means that there is no best treatment for alopecia areata, that every doctor has his own approach. One of the few things we could agree on was that if there is a patient with a single patch of alopecia areata, then in such a case, the best first-line treatment is intralesional troncinolone. It should be injected approximately one centimeter apart and the concentration should be 2.5 to 5 milligram per milliliter, sometimes up to 10 milligram per milliliter. We should avoid areas such as the frontal area in which we are likely to cause atrophy, but also it is worth knowing that we all agreed that usually atrophy will resolve over a few weeks without any additional treatment. We have also agreed that intralesional tramcinolone is more effective in alopecia areata compared to potent topical steroids. There was no consensus on phototherapy. We had different points of view on the efficacy of light therapy in alopecia areata. We agreed that the best candidates for systemic treatment in alopecia areata are adult patients with severe disease which involves 50 or more percent of the scalp. The usual treatment are steroids or steroids in combination with so-called steroid sparing agents or adjuvant drugs. Let's start with the steroids. Prednisone or prednisolone are the preferred types of uh, steroids. However, I have to admit that my preference is tramcinolone. Tramcinolone in the oral form is not available in all countries, so in such a case, probably I would choose prednisone. We agreed that the administration of steroids should be daily, and most importantly, we agreed that the dose of steroids should be tapered down slowly over more than 12 weeks. Why? Because tapering the dose slowly will decrease the risk of relapse. There's a wide range of adjuvant therapies which may be used in alopecia areata. The consensus points to two major ones. This is the methotrexate and cyclosporin. Methotrexate should be used at a dose of 15 to 20 milligrams per week. Uh, however, I know some experts who are using a higher dose of even 25 or 30 uh, milligram per week in some cases. In every case when we use methotrexate, we have to remember about the folic acid and about following all the rules with it, which are associated with the use of methotrexate. The same applies for cyclosporin. Cyclosporin is recommended at a dose of 3 to 5 milligram per day. And uh, again, it should be not a very short treatment. The preferable duration is 6 to 12 months. Personally, sometimes I use a longer time frame just to avoid a relapse after having successful regrowth. And it has been pointed by the authors of the consensus that cyclosporin may be also effective as a treatment in monotherapy. We have also discussed the possible application of JAK inhibitors in alopecia areata. And most of us believe that this is a very promising treatment in alopecia areata, also in monotherapy, not only in combination with steroids. However, we had to admit that many of us do not really have experience with JAK inhibitors, that we base our opinion on the literature data. An important issue is the discontinuation of systemic treatment. And we discussed three options. First, a patient in whom we achieve full hair regrowth. In such a patient, we should not discontinue the treatment immediately, but it should go on for six months, and then we should taper down the dose to decrease the risk of a relapse. 
The second situation is a patient in whom we have sufficient regrowth, but not complete regrowth, but we decide to discontinue treatment to then go on with topical therapy. And then a third situation, the patient is receiving treatment, but there is no hair regrowth. And I believe in such a case, we should go on for at least few months to be sure and to be to give the patient time to respond to the therapy. But if there is no response within six months, then the consensus is we should probably discontinue after not longer than six months. So today I am talking about a consensus. But what is a consensus in medical language? Well, this is not a general agreement, but it is a result of a voting procedure. This is like an election. If there are three candidates or three different types of treatment, and maybe this one is your favorite, but then come election time, and if your candidate does not get sufficient votes, then your candidate and your idea is gone and it will not be included into the consensus. So a consensus is a point of view of the majority. And there may be some treatment options which are not included in the consensus because, because they were not shared by the majority. We also like to share with you some of my own preferences in the treatment of alopecia areata. For a patient, who is adult with a moderate to severe alopecia areata, my first line treatment is cyclosporine, either in monotherapy or in combination with steroids. Cyclosporine, I always start with a very low dose because there is a small subset of patients, especially very young women, who do not tolerate cyclosporine well. So I prefer to first make sure that the tolerance is good and then increase the dose up to four milligram per kilogram per day. Steroids, intralesional, oral, but also sometimes deep intramuscular injections of tramcinolone are of benefit in some patients. We have just published a systematic review on the efficacy of cyclosporine in alopecia areata. And the data show that cyclosporine in monotherapy is effective in 57% of patients while used in combination with steroids, the efficacy is 69%. However, we have to keep in mind that patients who are being described in literature who are using cyclosporine, these are usually non-responders to other types of therapy. When used as first-line treatment, in my experience, the efficacy of cyclosporine may be even up to 90%. Some of us may wonder whether or not cyclosporine therapy is a good idea during the COVID-19 pandemic. And yes, we have an answer for this. This is an article written by myself and my colleagues, published just a few days ago in JED, and it shows that cyclosporine has an antiviral activity. It does not only inhibit the replication of the viruses, but it has been even suggested as a potential treatment for the coronavirus infection. So, in my opinion, cyclosporine therapy during the COVID-19 pandemic is not a reason for concern. So with this, I would like to finish today. If you would like to hear more about hair or about trichoscopy, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And thank you for being here.